Hello, wanted to do a little video on tulips and getting tulips to come back uh, for multiple seasons and how I'm gonna try to do that this year. Uh, so this first off is uh, creeping flocks. You can see them going all the way down the bank along the street here and they have just thousands, maybe millions of flowers here. Um, flocks is Greek for flame and uh, you can see the hillsides almost on fire with color. Um, really love this plant. It, once you get these established, they're easily a perennial in the Great Lakes. So uh, no problem. They've, some of these are already three or four years old. I like to plant them up on this rock wall and they sort of cascade down and they look really pretty. Um, one thing I did is I put these rock, little short rock walls in and that almost creates like a little raised bed for my tulips and it keeps them nice and dry and allows them to get plenty of water as the water comes down the hillside, but then it also lets them dry out so their feet don't stay wet. So these are my tulips. Um, I My secret is I went to Costco and bought lots of tulips. So these are the tulips I have. Um, I wanna show you guys kind of a little experiment and kind of fill you in on what I'm gonna do this next year. I just take the bags, I mix them all together and I let nature kind of figure out uh, the order. Um, one of the advantages is, for example, you can see this tulip has not yet bloomed, whereas some of the other ones are maybe getting towards the end of their life. And by doing this, you extend the bloom period because the plants are kind of blooming at different times and you don't have just one sea of color and then it's all dying at the same moment. You also get variations in height. So some of them are tall tulips, some are short tulips. Um, I think it looks good. Some people might think this looks a little disorganized, but I kind of like it. I'll put a link to the video of me planting them here so you guys can see how they, how tightly they're planted together. But what I really wanted to focus on is this is a tulip bed that I did not replant in the fall. So these tulips were established two falls ago. So this is the second spring that they've been growing. And then these tulips were planted in the fall and this is the first year. So these basically came from Costco last fall. I planted them and this is what you get. This is what this would look like in the second year if I did nothing. And as you can see here, not so many tulips, still plenty of green material, plenty of uh, leaves, but just not a lot of tulips. So I watched a cool little video, I'll put a link to it, of a guy who grew up on a, a, a tulip farm in Holland and he kind of explained the basics of, of tulip production. Uh, but basically what's happened here is the mother bulbs have subdivided and now we're getting smaller and smaller bulbs coming out. So we don't have the big monster bulbs that I got at Costco. Um, these are gonna be kind of a second year. Thank you very much, appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you so much. So this is the second year that they've grown in and you can see, um, get stopped quite a bit on the street here. So, um, so second year they've grown in and you just, you don't have that big giant center flower. These are actually pretty short normally, but uh, a lot of the, the big tulips have subdivided and put their attention on the reproducing uh, by division. And so you're just not gonna get the mass. The other problem is that this is very dense. It's really too dense to be sustainable. Um, there's just too many flowers in too small an area. This is starting to thin out to about what could begin to be say, sustained in this area. So if you want this, you have to create that, that mass of tulips. Otherwise you're probably gonna end up with this, which is not quite as impressive, let me just say that. Um, it's fine, but it's not what I'm going for. So I read a few uh, and watched a few videos on YouTube and I don't think people really, a lot of people who do tulip videos I don't think they know much about what they're talking about. Um, so what they recommend is once the, once the flowers uh, go to seed, and I'll show you in a little bit here, I don't think I have any seed pods, but they'll go to seed. You should deadhead the seed pods. That focuses the energy down into the bulb. And then basically let the, let the leaves die back naturally. As you let the leaves die back, that energy that they're producing from photosynthesis, photosynthesis is being transferred down into the bulb and the bulb is getting larger and larger. So the focus is on the bulb. Now, if this was Holland, what they would do is they would actually top the flowers, they would cut the flowers down, 
uh, again, to focus all the energy on making bigger and bigger bulbs. Now, what's gonna naturally happen is the bulb is gonna subdivide. Not all the little bulbs down there are gonna be able to produce flowers this year, or I should say next year. So you really gotta kind of pick and choose which ones you keep. And the only way to do that effectively is not just to leave them there, cut it back, and that's what most videos tell you to do. You actually have to dig these up. You have to dig them up, you have to wash the bulbs, sort them, pick the sizes that are viable, which the guy in the video was saying about the size of a quarter or larger would be viable. And then you replant them. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to Costco, I'm gonna get some fresh uh, bulbs imported from Holland, and I will mix those together with the ones that I'm able to salvage from this year's production. And that combination will go back in in the fall. So I'm gonna do a video on, on digging them up and sorting them and storing them and washing them and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but basically, if you just leave them in the ground, this is what you're gonna get, not that. So there are 14 uh, groups of tulips, 3,000 varieties. Some groups are more effective at naturalizing, but in the end, uh, just a massive amount of color like this is not going to probably happen naturally in nature. Um, so it's, a, it's kind of artificially created here. So let me show you guys a couple other little things. So first off, I wanted to show you guys uh, some cut flowers here. One of the advantages of having this many tulips is you can go out and get bouquets all the time. Here's a little bouquet. So these are a mignon bouquet, a little cute bouquet. Um, I just used a mason jar and I cut smaller, more delicate flowers. They aren't arranged yet. I'm gonna arrange them inside. And here's a larger vase that one of my neighbors gave me. And this, these are going, these are both going to neighbors. And I, I cut larger flowers. So, you know, that's one of the advantages. When you go get tulips at the store, there's one size. Here, you can pick the ones you want. If somebody only wants yellow ones or purple ones, you can just pick all the purple ones and yellow ones. But I, I think the variation looks really, really stunning. All right, so a couple more slight things to talk about. So like I said, tulips can subdivide uh, two ways. You can have subdivision of the bulb, which I can't show you guys right now because the bulbs are busy doing the tulip thing, but they can also produce seed pods. And what'll happen in here, let's see if I can show you on this little bulb, tulip that's falling apart. So right here, this is the stamen, this little guy, and this is the pistil. The stamen is the male part of the tulip, if you want to think of that, that that way and the pistol is the female part of the tulip and then you've got the petals around there. There's pollen on the end of here and what you can do and what they actually do if you're actually trying to breed tulips is you rub that pollen onto the end of the pistil. Then the pistil will germinate and you'll not germinate but it'll it'll form a seed pod. The seed pod will will grow and eventually you'll get tulip seeds. You plant those in the ground and you're not gonna get tulips. Let me just <laughs> cut to the chase. Those are gonna be teeny, teeny, tiny tulips. It's gonna take multiple years for them to get large enough to actually be viable to create flowers. So uh, tulip breeders are the only ones who do this. Tulip farming is done by using the subdivision of the bulb. So the bulb, uh, the mother bulb will break apart and, and form smaller baby bulbs that it will, it'll try to create. Those bulbs are not all gonna create flowers. That's why you get all that greenery with no flowers. And uh, what they do is they plant those and they, and they make them larger and larger. And then eventually they get to a big enough size that they can be sold and those are sold. But they sort them and they pull out the big ones and they plant the little ones back in to produce more flower, flowers for the next year. Think of them kind of like, um, like seedling potatoes. So you could do that. Um, you could have like an entire bed where you're just trying to bulk up tulip bulbs. It's not really worth it to me. I don't have enough space. I just live in a little village, so I can't do that, but you could actually go that direction. A um, couple other things I'm gonna do for next year. These are grape hyacinths. Uh, Muscari, I think is what they're called. I think I'm gonna plant these along the inside between my flocks and my tulips. Um, I really like the way these look and they're delicate and small. In this area, there's a sidewalk and you can walk right up to it. And I think it'll look really beautiful with muscari, uh, with the grape hyacinths right there along this border. So I'm gonna add those in as a flower. Plus grape hyacinths are very easy to naturalize in the Great Lakes. 
once these guys are, are growing in a few seasons, um, you can't almost get rid of them. Uh, and they're a beautiful plant. And they have a really nice juxtaposition and height uh, between the tulips and the, uh, and the creeping flocks. The last thing I want to show you guys is the creeping flocks. We used to have a couple uh, not very pretty evergreens right here. And so I dug them up and it looks pretty bad right now. But I'm going to put these creeping flocks. This is what I buy. So the specific type, there's the Latin name, Phlox subulata, which I must mean creeping in Latin. I don't know. Somebody can correct me in the comments. They call it creeping blue. You'll hear it called uh, emerald blue a lot. They're really all the same. Uh, they just have different, you know, names for the color. Uh, but they're the common blue flocks. And you can see, you know, in this area, um, obviously it's pretty bare, but when I end up planting them, uh, it'll look kind of like this. And over time, they will grow down the hill and they'll fill in this whole area. And also I plant them up here on the rock walls. These are just planted a week ago. It'll take them a little time, they'll develop, and then they'll end up spilling down the rock wall. And they look amazing down the rock face. You can see here. There's a little tulip that decided to go sideways through the rocks. So mother nature is amazing like that. So, all right, anyhow, so that's the plan for the tulips. Here's the flocks and uh, I'm gonna post this. And obviously uh, if anybody has any comments, I'm glad to share my experience. I will say I've only grown tulips a couple years, but uh, you know, tulips are a very easy uh, plant if you have the right conditions and you're willing to do a little work digging them up and then replanting them and the flocks are a great ground cover I will say this is this is the peak of the season it doesn't look like this normally um, what I'll do on the tulips is after I dig them up I'm going to plant zinnias in here and I might do a little video on zinnias I love zinnias uh, they're very easy to plant you can just direct seed plant them I'll also do some starters where I'll start them in a little seed tray just to kind of get a, a couple week jump start on the season. And zinnias are spectacular colors and great for butterflies. And it makes a good rotation of the crops if you want to think of it like a farmer. So I've got my spring crop, which is my tulips and I guess also the creeping flocks. And then I've got my summer crop, which is summer and fall are zinnias. And the zinnias are just just amazing it's the same kind of just amazing amount of color and tons of butterflies so those are two plants that i love and uh hopefully this helps somebody out who's trying to figure out how to get tulips to come back year after year